I was looking at Apology Man's YouTube because he uploaded the 10v10. It was, I'm depressed looking at this. Apology Man and I filled for four hours on that show, right? Looking at it on YouTube and seeing just the raw match time, less than two hours. It's like 108 minutes. It was a four hour show. Over half of it was us just sitting there doing nothing. Anyway, chat, I would like to watch some of these matches with you guys, do some match analysis. You know, this one's not high on my list, but this character is pretty uncommon so i wanted to watch it just because of that kid viper is a little shit you know that kv before the exhibition i was like hey we should play some games right i was like all right and then i made a tweet that was like oh i haven't played any good anjis i want to play kv and kv said ah oh, too bad i dropped anji and i was like oh shit okay well kv played geo in the beta so maybe kv's playing geo or something and then KV made a tweet that was like, oh, it's really nice to not be an Anji player anymore and just like have all this power. And then the exhibition started and KV was playing Anji. And I was like, what kind of double agent, triple undercross, revolver ocelot shit is this? This is the deepest lore I've ever seen. All of that undercover work. And then game one, Anji mirror match. <laughs> Anji mirror match you do all this how you hide this whole time and then you fight against your own character you hate to see it so I learned a few things about Anji so if you guys don't know Kid Viper streams by the way and I've been watching KV stream quite a bit and I haven't fought this character that much right but there's a few things that I have learned about this character that I think are really cool first of all I don't know if 6h is an auto media after butterfly here but it might be if it's not I, I'm wondering if it catches backdash. I'm really curious about this. But I like the spin fake out into the low here. And then this setup is really cool. Where, uh, what's it called? P in the corner, this follow up from Fujin is plus four apparently. I didn't know how plus it was. Plus four is really good actually. It's, it's a good spot to be in the corner. So I like 5k into 6h after. Uh, I think that's a good string. Hey, don't, don't change my quality. Also, why did it get so quiet? There we go. That, that's a pretty cool little setup. I also noticed that one thing I saw a lot is butterfly toss. And obviously, butterfly is really slow. But the natural reaction that most people do is they jump when they see butterfly, right? And then they do ko. If you guys don't know, ko is the move where he jumps up in the air like this. This move is fucked up. It's a really good anti-air. And he gets an air action after, right? And if it hits, you take a ton of damage. So yeah, it's a really pesky move to deal with. Obviously, you know, 2p pressure into the 6p into Fujin. Yeah, that was gonna hurt. Great stagger pressure. KV has really good timing to catch people jumping out of your pressure, right? A lot of people. No, they block. I mean, they could. It depends on what they do. 2h. Bam. Dead. They block. They could block the ko, but if you block ko, I mean, you get put back into the corner and you're just kind of stuck, right? It it is a really good anti air. It is a really good anti air. Yeah, that's a punish. The spin is really interesting to me. I think it's as a tool, it has downsides, but I think it has a lot of upsides as well. There are certain normals or things in the game that are quite hard to deal with that I think spin and by its nature opposed from Zato are really quite proficient at dealing with. Because most normals have a lot of uh, recovery if you spin or, or absorb them. You know, this is just a free punish with sweep. Moves that are normally really, really good actually are not so good when they interact with spin like maybe soul 6s or fafner or like chip far slash or ram buttons or whatever right there's lots of you know things like that that when they interact with spin it's you know it's really bad for the character yeah that's something you see a lot so much from this character that was a good adjustment from both of them these are two good fighting game characters or players butterfly this time kv jumps and then double jumps and instead of like Doing the same thing as last time, Domi instead of doing uh Ko jumps back, you see, to try to like catch the anti air back here instead. And then KV just jumps and then gains space because of that. That was a really good choice. That that was the same situation we were just in, and KV just made an immediate adjustment. You see that? It was really good. Yeah, throw. That's one thing that you have to get yourself in the habit of is throwing or checking after the Ko. I wonder why PRC back. KV always does PRC back, and I wonder if there's a specific reason. Maybe to keep it safe to reversal supers or button. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, throw would have killed there. 
Mm -hmm, nice. The slow RC is really, really good. Anytime you BRC forward in this game, you just, uh, you kind of put them in check every time, right? You're like, okay, are you doing anything? If so, it's a free wave punish. If you're not doing anything, then I just get to do a free, you know, mix up or whatever anyway. This is what I mean about this is a starter. The damage on this is so high. Like that was, look at the damage without the wall splat and the super, by the way. It could have been even higher. You just melt. You're just like, well, okay. Not too much unless you're near the corner. As past say jam is saying, 6p anti-air is not that scary unless you are you have them cornered, right? Oh, that's so gangster. I love that shit so much. The spin to go through the YRC, this shit is so KV kind of nasty though, right? That is so good. And 2 H O T G to kill. That was so good. This is while I was watching this, I just remember thinking like, okay, KV's got some shit. I, I've I've not seen many other Anji players in general, right? So it was cool to watch because, um, you know, this is not a character I have. Oh God, what a start! This is not a character I have so much experience with. So I really wanted to watch, mostly because I was interested in uh, this character. And then it's funny that they played against each other. This is something that I need to look at, right? Okay. So right here, this backdash in a sweep. I was thinking about this when I was fighting this character. When you backdash a butterfly, if he whiffs throw, he should always explode, right? Because if you hit him, the butterfly goes away. Yeah, you should just always make him explode if he whiffs throw there. That seems really bad for him. Yeah, this is this footage is from KV's. This is KV's perspective. So yeah, th this how this looks is how the match looked between them. And it's very funny because some of the connections compared to this were so nasty. Yeah, that's a punish. That's a paddling. Oh, I think Domi thought he had the meter, which is why he did 5D there. Because a lot of characters can get just tap dust. And then if you have 50 meter here, you can RC it and get a full combo, right? Yeah, dead. That's something that is, I think, really, you know, universally useful for a lot of characters is dust RC when you um, have 50 meter. Because it turns just like a regular fast dust into a combo starter, which is really good. I should look into that today. That's a good thing to look into. Domi's name is GG player. That's cursed as fuck. I, I can't. If your name is GG player online, I don't trust you. Yeah. This does a lot of damage. This really fucking hurts. It does so much. Ooh, that was almost bad. If that hit closer to the corner, it would have been. Oh, it would have been even worse. This is a punish on the throw. Throws are counter hit recovery. This is the right idea, but I think KV had to hit a different button here. Maybe like 5k or 2p or something. And this is counter hit starter because, you know, throw away recovery is counter hit. And you just melt. And you have meter if you're Domi here for a setup. Uh, yeah, that was supposed to be, I think what he tried in the other, in the other round, tap dust into RC, but it just missed because of the FD. That was actually an important defensive choice, right? This FD here from KV actually forced this mix up to whiff, right? FD right here on the, uh, close slash. If Domi doesn't have meter, then this is a clean whiff punish, right? Yeah, try to run up 6p. If you get hit by charge dust in this game, you really do explode. It does so much damage. I never use charge dust just because as soul, his dust traditionally is kind of whack. So it's just not in my mind to use. But uh, it's pretty pretty good for a few characters, I think. Man, it's been a such a weird move, eh? That was a cool confirm. I wonder if that had hit close slash, if that would have worked, or just raw two D into Ko instead, maybe. I'm not sure. There was probably a way to clean that route up, and I'm sure, I'm sure KV knows it. I think the situational awareness to confirm off butterfly hits seems pretty important for this character. Yeah, that doesn't seem so bad. One thing I, I talked about before, I think flailing on butterfly is not so bad. Like even when butterfly hits you here. 
and that 2S happens, like, what's Domi going to get off of it? You see what I mean? Like, what? I mean, what do you... He gets the run-up throw. He gets space, but that is also really useful to know. I didn't realize that it counters projectiles like that. Oh, that could have been... That could have been way worse. Do you not get Fujin off that? Does this not combo into Fujin? Or, ah, oh, just built RC, too. There was a way to close this round out. Air throw, yeah. That is a heartbreaker. Yeah, maybe 2S Ko. Ko might have been too slow. You don't need much there, right? Just Fujin would have worked. Oh, no. Yeah, the overhead didn't reach. The over What's the overhead? Rin? 2P6H. I, I think that... Um, oh, you hate to see it. This actually does a lot of damage, too, because it's just a raw hit into the splat, right? Yeah. That was a good choice, I think, from KV to FD again. Domi tried to answer the FD by running, and then KV challenged the space. That was pretty smart, I think, actually. That was a good adjustment. Damn, that was cool. This character, I think, is really interesting. And as you know, as people dig in more, there'll be more to check out. KV stream is kid underscore viper, I think, right? Yeah, kid underscore viper is the stream. If you want to go watch. He streamed a long set last night playing Anji, and he has a bunch of cool stuff with this character. So if you're interested and you want to steal some stuff, it's a good place to go. But yeah, I mean, it's hard. I think bursting in this game in general, you know, tied to that last set is difficult because combos like do a lot of damage quickly, right? So bursting later in the combo feels bad because, well, you've taken a lot of damage already. And so that kind of sucks. But bursting quickly is quite bad because a lot of confirms are like button, button RC. And bursting on the RC point is incredibly bad. So we have our next match. I like these little title cards. Justin versus Nage. Before this exhibition, uh, when they're like putting in people and stuff, Justin's like, I'll go next. And then he saw it was Naga and he was like, I have no idea what Faust does. You know, it's not like he's not been playing this game a lot, right? He's been playing the game a ton, but that's just kind of the nature of how it goes, I think, in this game so far. Yeah, I think a lot of people just don't know these matchups, right? And Nage, in particular, is a is a monster, right? Like, he's like playing a completely different character to me almost. Yeah, Nage Faust, damn, is this really the quality word? That's how it goes sometimes. So a couple of things. We were talking about it before the set started, but 5K is a really important button for Faust. You saw it there. It whiffs on crouching characters, but it's a, you know, a really good anti here. This button right here. So obviously it's a K button. You can Gatling it into your command normals or your uh, sweep or 5D2 if you want. And it gives one of the best anti routes for Faust, which is 5K 6H, right? Uh, which is something you're going to see a lot in this matchup. And Nage, I think, does a really good job of intercepting this character. Yeah, I like that jump 2k to, uh, like, reset the positioning and not get caught up. He also does, by the way, a ton of scalpel pull. Yeah, he's going to lose the trumpet. The trumpet, the thing is, is, like, uh, it forces an immediate burst. It's a bad first item to throw, yeah? Like, you really do not want to throw first item trumpet. That shit feels pretty bad, right? <laughs> First item trumpet, forces your own burst, feels bad. But then he gets mini foul, so RNG is on his side, right? Yeah, just sends it with the mix, mix, mix. And he had hammer there, which, you know, oh, that was a sick confirm. That was so nice, actually. Just this straight kind of like float back. Jump, jump H in the corner is so scary because in one jump, he got double jump H, right? And then jump H wall bounces every time it hits. Yeah, I can't believe this didn't wall break, but it's it's not that end of the world. Yeah, he has meter for the 5D mix-up. There's a punish. That punish doesn't hurt that bad, though, huh? Without meter, that's not so bad. Good block. Good of Justin not to misfire on that confirm. 6H does not combo into scalpel on regular hit either. Especially not from, like, that far away. You're chilling. Oof. That could have been worse. It does kill. Man, it just barely killed. This could have been worse. This jump jump 2K is very scary as a move when you hit it. Like When you do jump 2K and it's like way up here, you're high flying, it could be pretty scary. But it ended up hitting, so I don't think it really matters. Damn, that really killed. It was a very scrambly weird round. Justin didn't really get too much offense. I think he was trying to press a lot and i i wonder if you could have just slowed down and used more jump h 
Yeah, I feel like Jump H is, is maybe what he should be fishing with more in this matchup. This is a lot more of what I expected to happen. I think, like, doing Jump H... Um, what's it called? I think doing Jump H is, you know, really the way you have to control against a character like this, yeah. Try to do 2k into the command throw. This is probably more of what uh what I would expect, yeah. Especially since Nage is doing scalpel so much. I wonder if Justin was waiting for burst and that's why he didn't 3k. But wait. Yeah, that was really good. So this is an example of, I think, Nage being very uh, smart about his item choices, right? Obviously, bar slash item, this is very negative. Justin doesn't do anything. He just jumps when he sees the anchor or the... um. The weight and then nage runs and does jump h so even if justin tries to air to air him or something like the weight's coming down anyway right so you have the weight there as a as a buffer and he gets a lot of space he does the bomb bag jump h again so he built up all this space and got out of the corner off that straight item toss and like far slash item toss is not very good on block but if you don't challenge it uh you know faust just gets away with all this into the corner right he's got bomb out nage is very good about yeah using the bomb he gets a lot of like cross-ups on it Ooh, that could have been punished he gets a lot of cross-ups on it, and he's very crafty about it. Ooh, that was a really good interrupt. Wow, that was H-Dolphin. And he's got Mini-Faust here. Yeah, that's pretty rough. One thing about this character that's really funny to me is he really does snowball quite well with multi-item toss sometimes. Like... He got mini fouls, so this is the bananas. They don't really matter that much here, right? I mean, there's the peel, I guess, which is there. But mini fouls hitting right in the air like that is so good. And then the 6H combos out of the air, so she gets bounced, right? Which gives you double item toss. So you have time to, like, set up and throw multiple items here, which is quite nice. The bomb's out. Wow, it barely didn't hit him. How the fuck did that bomb not hit? Ooh. So one thing about this matchup that's very important is knowing how to deal with the jump 2k options after. Uh, I guess he was in the air there, right? But he could have jumped again here and forced the bomb bag to explode close to Faust or like try to run under or maybe then jump back H or something. Yeah, the peel did end up hitting, but I, I think it was just like extra damage at that point. I don't think it really mattered for the, the combo. That is very good. Getting the gold burst. Oh god. Doesn't go for the air throw. I think Justin did try to air throw for Zakir. What up? That was a weird little scramble. He tried jump 2k or he tried 2k. Yeah. <laughs> this has got to be an air throw attempt, right? This jump D. I guess unless he was really trying to fly overhead. I don't know. Oh no, trumpet again. If he gets trumpet, yeah, that's very good. Oh, that was a good try. A lot of people do that using gold burst. In moments like that to try and like just you know get the meter or whatever it's very common is that a command block or is it just his block animation no just the way he blocks a lot of characters in gear have weird block animations honestly i like slayers where he's like moving his hand in a circle you know he consistently does that after blocking dolphin <laughs> did you see I remember asking before this match, right? I remember saying, like, is 5k useful in this matchup? And he's like, yeah, you know, you can use it. It interrupts Dolphin. Like, it's pretty good anti -air. Look at him, just 5k, 5k, 5k. <laughs> it seems pretty useful, right? I gotta say, and you get all these items after. He got mini fouls, which is really good. Oh, not a home run. Mini fouls still walking. There's the weight. That gives you that gives you some extra risk as well, right? It's all kind of snowballed off the exact same sequence, right? You know, Mini Faust is on the way, right? So it's 2H item. He gets the weight. So Mini Faust plus the weight here forces Justin to jump, right? He doesn't want to deal with Mini Faust on the ground. The weight's coming and he doesn't want to deal with that. So jump H, which, you know, cranks the risk, falls. He gets the jump K after to tags him, right? This is cranking up more risk. Then Meteors, then he had to jump again because he didn't want to get tagged by Mini Faust. This is like such a bad... It all kind of adds up very quickly. If you get good item tosses, it really can hurt, you know? That was cool. I don't think I've seen that. It happens so fast, dude. 
5k 6 there, H is cracked. That shit is so useful. Bomb's there. Yeah, I like the burst into the bomb. I think that was uh, strategically very smart. He got shitty items, but I think that this, strategically this makes a lot of sense. You burst them back into the bomb, right? And then he throws three items. So imagine if instead of banana double afro, this was like one mini Faust or one meteor or something, right? Like you just need one good item out of these three. He, he used that burst positionally to gain three item chances and he got shitty items but you know life goes on right that was the idea i mean he also has the space which ended up working out that time he got a good item toss trumpet which i mean that's a free command throw attempt because of the trumpet right and now the afro's on what i mean by free command throw attempt because of the the trumpet is you you get the trumpet here and he does 2k and he gets to go for the command throw even if justin jumps the little fellows are on their way right so you can try to use these to cover you when you go for the the command throw setup. So then the afro's on now, and like you know that's a really bad feeling. You get hit by scalpel or jump D easier or whatever, right? Then that gets some pressure. Weight's coming. Empty jump low off the weight. Yeah, that was empty jump low into overhead off the weight. Wall break, which is really important because Faust gets space and the extra meter, right? And the extra meter means he's gonna get like a scarecrow mix up or something, or a combo into super. You know, you can see, like, how, look at how much meter he's building off of this, right? He doesn't have the meter to do this combo. And then the meter build off of this lets him build up a shit ton of meter with meter despair. You know, really useful part of the wall break, right? Extra meter. That was really well played. This set is, like... When you watch when you watch Nage play, it's really just like, damn, he is prepared for everything. You know, there's footage out there you can watch too of him training moding in Exert. And like when he training modes, he legit sets a situation and does item toss and then just reacts to the situation. So in the corner he get like gets a hit, does an item toss, reacts to what the item is, does the combo or confirm or block string or whatever. Then resets. Then he like gets a hit, throws an item, reacts to what the item is, does the next thing, then he resets. He just like labs the exact same sequences over and over and over and over so that in the match, in every situation, he's always prepared. Okay, Deb versus Nakamura. We'll watch the Deb sets. I get asked about this matchup a lot. Like, how do I fight against Milia? Like, I play Soul or X or Y character. What am I supposed to do against Milia? This character is so fast. I really struggle to deal with her. Like she's just flying all over the screen. I hate it here. Every time I get knocked down, they say block, white boy block. And I just, I die. I die to the disc. What am I supposed to do? In this matchup against Milia, you really have to know how to be preemptive. You also have to understand that not all disc setups are the same, right? Like, so depending on the disc setup, you have different options that you can do. So let's get into this. Deb, really... I think the beginning of this set should just show you that Deb knows how to fight Milia. Not even five seconds. The first two seconds of this matchup should show you that Deb has a game plan against Milia ASAP. Not like just playing soul, but look at the choices at the start of the match. 2S. This is a fast move, recovers quickly, and is very good for interrupting runs forward, right? Like doesn't hit far slash, doesn't hit any of the normal round start soul stuff. Then when Milia backdashes, does neutral jump P. How often do you see a soul player not just do far slash and approach on the ground? This is how you fight against Milia. You whiff your fast ground move that is low risk, right? And then you do your jump P or your jump H, which is a fast recovery air button that allows you to clip Milia. You don't need to confirm into a lot of damage. You just need like a stop sign to swat her out of the air, right? Because once you hit her out of the air, you can run up and do whatever pressure you want. But this round start should tell you this is how you play against Milia, right? You don't just sit there on the ground trying to hit her because you, you never will. You're not going to react to the way she moves. You have to be preemptive. So then we see the air dash in. And again, that air dash did not do that much damage, right? It was just jump P, jump P. But it, it didn't matter because Deb got the knockdown into this position in the corner, right? Which is the most important part. Lost, lost the air interaction to get out, but it doesn't matter that much. I like the DP attempt too on throw into disc. Again, you see the, the neutral decision. That air throw was gangster as fuck. What the hell? You see the neutral decision is like jump H, air dash, jump P. Like trying to do stuff that's fast and like relatively low risk. For Arcadum, what up? Oh yeah, were you guiltying the gear? Howdy, fellow guilty gear fans. Thanks for the sub, Arino. We're doing some analysis on this big uh, USA versus Japan 10v10 that just happened. 
right? This is one of those matchups. I commentated it, so you should hear my voice twice. Just the way every streamer wants it. RC is a little bit too late there. Yeah, that's just the story of this matchup, you know. TS is really bad on block, actually. That should have been a challenge, but, you know, life goes on. I like that adjustment, too. This is nasty. This character is too fast. You know, this is one of the biggest adjustments I think that Deb makes in this set is that Nakamura really loves run up throw. And I don't blame Milia players. You know, she runs across the ground really quickly. Milia players go ham. They just run at you sometimes, right? And so run up throw is a really strong option. And so for that reason, they do a good job of like adjusting and being like, okay, okay, okay. I guess I got to hit a button. I guess I got to hit a button instead. You see that a lot in this set. Yeah, that run up right there. Notice that Deb is trying to contest the air a lot. So Nakamura's like, fuck it. I'm going to run up on the ground way more. Ooh, that's a punish. Far slash H, that shit hurts. On Milia, far slash H into Bandit Revolver does a lot of damage. Gets the knockdown. It's not that big. Oh, the wake up grab. The wake up throw on defense is definitely rough in this set for a few of the games. Yeah, again, good adjustments here. So notice that uh, Nakamura, right, is trying to approach. And Deb is just jump H'ing. And is really controlling this airspace a lot, right? So because this airspace is so highly contested, we saw in the last round that Nakamura just lands and then sends it on the ground. Just like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to run in on the ground. So then, because of that, right, we start to see the adjustment where Deb is now going to challenge on the ground a bit more, right? So you see the 2S here, 2S trade, far slash to interrupt the grounded hit. See this? I think that was that was attempted burst bait, maybe. And Nakamura just doesn't take the bait, which is like, you know, feels bad. There's the burst now. That was a good block, too. Oh, try to run up 5k and gets thrown. You hate to see it. But that's like an important message, right? If your opponent is just like defensive throw, man, this nasty quality we got for this video chat. If your opponent's just mashing defensive throw like that, then, you know, what can you do, right? You just go like, all right, I'll bait it. I'll bait it if you say so. Yeah, you see the adjustment? Look at the way Deb plays the round star now, right? Nakamura has has said, all right, I'm just going to approach on the ground. You're contesting airspace well. I'm just going to run it on the ground, no problem. So what does Deb open with? Fafner into 6S. Way more ground control than in the other game. Oh, it sucks that you lose the corner here, but also it's soul, and that's a lightweight combo, so you just explode the character. It's very easy on the lightweight characters to um, get the BR whiff combos like that. So now if you're Nakamura, I think you probably want to stop approaching on the ground. Because Deb is like interrupted on the ground like nine times now. Uh, so I think the air approach is back on the menu. You know what I mean? I think it's time to just approach in the air. Oh, that was actually... I hate good melee players. I hate them so much. Every fiber of my being... Because look, Deb also was like, I'm going to run up and it's time, right? Milia is in the air. I'm going to do jump age. There's six Ps, you son of a... What kind of Milia player waits for you to approach? I hate it here. I hate it here. This motherfucker. That was a burst bait, I think. Yeah, I think the, the counter hit slash into that was a burst bait. Unless I missed a jump P. And it was a missed bad moon, but... No, I think that was just a burst bait, probably. You can air dash uh, backwards after J, J H or whatever, or air dash forward, I guess, if you want. Yeah, from Soul. But I think Deb just came down with another button. I I can go back and look, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Nice double jump to escape the air throw there. That's unfortunate. Probably not intended. It was probably a cross up, and Deb hit 5K and got BR. Could confirm. And great throw. Good adjustment, I think, overall in this match to contest the ground space a bit more and uh just kind of played really fast but played well despite the speed which is hard to do yeah that's how you you play the matchup so really great adjustment from deb in that second game so we'll see what nakamura does now oh i love that raw disc you know because deb has been trying to fight on the ground a lot so raw disc is a good choice if that's what you expect that's bad yeah you're kind of getting punched a lot here nakamura instead of um i like that adjustment too although didn't do anything off of it. I don't know if she gets anything off counter hit. 
2S though, to be honest, because 5H is too far here, right? I, I don't know if she gets anything here, but I like using 2S to keep Soul out a bit more. I think that's quite good. Dead. Yeah, I think if you're Nakamura, you have to you have to go on offense a bit here. But Deb is kind of just running you down. Staggers after the 6S. Bam. Fafner. Bam. Chip damage. Risk. You can't get hit here. Oh, that was a negative jump age for sure. That's why Deb challenge. Good neutral jump, actually. And went cross, went cross up twice in a row. I like these raw discs and neutral from Nakamura. I think it's good to change your option like that and not just like be set on one. Oh, that was cool. It was a meaty, a meaty hair care attempt. Oh, missed the sick combo, but it's fine. Oh, baited. This is kind of a consequence of the defense earlier being so much, uh, you know, defensive throw. This is a really good adjustment from Deb. Yeah, really good. Yeah, you kind of got run over in the last two games. Honestly, I think game one, Nakamura played great, but then couldn't really keep the same kind of control after that, which I don't blame you. It's hard to do against this character, right? Like, Soul's a fucking piece of shit. He just runs at you and you explode. So in that case, I think Deb did a good job of just sending it on the ground instead of just continuously fighting for airspace, being like, all right, if you don't care about the airspace, I'm just going to run at you on the ground. Defensive throw is a really powerful option. In fact, it's a particularly useful option for Milia because her defensive buttons are so slow, right? So a two-frame throw versus her, like, extremely slow challenges you know is a really important thing for the character to use but if it's the only thing you use on defense it's easy to bait lk versus goichi this is my favorite two match set we were watching from all the players perspectives so what you guys see is what the players see right and man goichi was smelling the game at some point i gotta say so they're playing uh this is east coast to west coast japan so it, I mean, it's pretty. It's about as far as you're gonna get for Johnny Volcano. What up, East Coast USA to West Coast Japan? That's nasty. But the match actually looked pretty good until you know the jump 2K happened. I I uh damn, I, that's a nice confirm actually. That's kind of sick. 5K 6H on air hit like that. That's cool. I think one thing I really like about this matchup and the way LK plays it is he does a really good job of not always initiating and his movement is excellent he does such a good job of not getting caught in bad spit look at that he just was chilling from full screen like waiting relaxing runs up catches this close slash and this is the god button by the way close slash that button is so good her close slash is fucked though gets that big lead and then just chills says okay you want to burst with 10 percent life like I'm yeah i also he uses a lot of the command dash he uses it quite a bit so and uh he does it very effectively the notice the way that he's trying to play the air game right is very different than goichi so lk is trying to use jump s right as like an air to air button to fish with and fight for airspace right so we see the air dash back into the the capital goichi's doing jump 2k he, I mean, he's not trying to air to air with like jump S or jump H or jump D or whatever. Like he's just doing jump 2K and then hoping to get a knockdown off of it so he can start this pressure, which is very good. Good escape on the pressure too from LK. He had a bit of space behind him in the corner here, right? So Gamma Blade into the back dash so that far slash was not going to be an issue and then escapes on the ground, which you can see like the obvious, the level one choice, I think, from most players after they back dash this is to escape in the air, right? Which is why Goichi tries the air to air with jump P. He expects an air escape and then LK doesn't do it and he wins the position because of it. You see this? So it was already like, it was one of those Goichi's like, okay, this is a, a good player. So I suspect that he's going to try to escape in the air, right? Because that's what most people do. And then LK just does the opposite, and it says, like, all right, I'm escaping on the ground. He, like, already committed to the command dash and then had an option after. 5K staggers. That shit is so annoying. I hate that 6H. It puts her in the in the air so she can do that little dive thing. Yeah, and I always get hit by it, and I'm like, man, why did that happen to me? Oh, it didn't get close slash. But still, this is a great round for LK. Uh-oh. Put yourself in a bad spot here. Wall run combo, ghost ride the whip. Yeah, that was gonna be. Oh, you're a sick fuck. 
That was going to be a lot of damage. I like the burst timing from LK, but I also know that if you burst on the second hit of that, I saw a Twitter video, and you know, I don't know if Twitter videos, you never know if they're true or not. But if you RC up, right, he does this combo. If you burst on the second hit, supposedly, it burst chip back into the corner. So I don't know. I'll have to see if that's actually the case. Anyway, game one goes to LK. And then when people are looking for the command dash, just you know staggers and try something else right I, think that's I like how often lk backdashes out of that pressure yeah that too so i'm pretty sure dp beats all the options that are not lush shaker unless it's spaced out right like i think if you do disc and or if you do raw raw 2d i think dp punishes like all of it right i think this is the cancel you have to do if you're spaced out and you don't want to die because i think disc or whatever else will get caught i think that's why you cancel it yeah, even hair car I think gets hit by it, right? Or am I wrong? Is the move hair car or hair care? I just call it the stupid ass low that always hits me. I think I've always called it car. It's good to interrupt too. This is a, a scary part about fighting this character, but a necessary one. When you hit gamma blade, obviously uh, chip takes damage as well. The thing is, the uh, trade here is important because you know mashing on chip on defense is scary right because you know mashing or challenging beats gamma blade but will lose to uh like reka or something right delayed reka or whatever so that's why you have to be very careful about mashing against gamma blade right because yeah you can mash to get out of that gamma blade but then you die to reka which is obviously bad and yeah that was a rough spot the burst was right when the rc happened which is very annoying happens all the time which is a free burst punish right you don't even have to bait it you've already done the work before it even i think most of these matches are actually pretty close for in this exhibition damn that combos huh. yeah bad moon hitting in the middle of the screen i don't think you care at all right you get clipped by bad moon you're like whatever dude which is funny because goichi just got hit there trying to block bad moon that will confirm was sick I think LK played this really well. I think most of the sets in this were uh, un bad, unfortunate matchups and just really, really uh, close matches or really well played from the uh, JP side. This is another one of those matches where I was like, I was pretty sure LK was going to win based on how I was looking. And then Goichi kicked the router, took him to the hidden, the hidden rollback village and smoked his ass. Yeah, notice the matchup knowledge there from Goichi, right? Like, if you're in a throw situation like this, like, the disc setup, unless they do a meaty on you, the disc setup is not meaty, so you can jump out of it. You see that? Off of 2D, the, the disc is meaty automatically, but... Is there a mod that makes Chip not talk during the Rekka? Man, he's done that so often. The... The 2k, 2d, and the Lush Shaker to beat DPs. Oh, that is so bad. Hey, fuck that move, and fuck all chip players, by the way. Why do you whiff your 2s, and then your 2h hits? Look at how far away this hits. Hey, fuck all you chip players who complained for 900 betas about how the character was useless, and you're whiffing 2s into 2h from half screen away. Fuck you. He's whiff. Why do they whiff cancel 2s28? Why does he get to do that? Oh no, that could have been a big confirm. Yeah, double alpha blade said, "Fuck it, I'm sending it." Good choice. I don't think he had done a single alpha blade till right there, right? It is like yeah. so incredibly good and incredible. Yeah, this Goichi just was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna start Alpha Blading Sun. It's 160 MS, it's time. It's time it's time for me. That was actually a punish on that? Wow. Yeah, that every time that's a cross up, right? And the reason is because So this is just matchup knowledge against Milia or like I guess just fighting game knowledge. The reason Milia players usually tend to cross up here is because they want the corner, right? So it's pretty easy. Um, it's pretty easy to just be like, okay, well, I can block cross up here because she's going to want to cross me up and retain corner position. So, you know, it makes a lot of sense to block cross up here. Yeah. 
I was talking about this yesterday when I was fighting Amelia and the, and she hit me out of the corner and I just walked cross up. I was like, yeah. I mean, the reason I did it is because I just expect that she would want the corner. I think that was supposed to be a dash up into another close slash, right? Did he FD? Yeah. The FD here makes it so that close slash and he tried to get another. He wanted another close slash, I think. But the um, the FD prevented it from happening, right? So that was important defense. Oh, that looked like it was hard to confirm. Clean. That button is so fucked up, by the way. Her close slash is such a good anti air. It's two hits, and it reaches really high above her head. It's a really useful button. And then the ping started to climb. We're up 30 ping since the uh, start of the set. I love also that we're seeing a lot of air to air like jump slash attempts from LK as well. Oh man. Yeah, I think this is the confirm he probably wanted in that other set. That will hit every time, right? The jump he whiff like that. Yeah, now we're in 233 MS. Kick the router. This guy Goichi said, son, uh I kicked the router. I'm gonna <laughs> It's time to send it. How? I guess we're already trying to back that. Look at this jump 2k. He's like, fuck it. I'm gonna just jump 2k. This is definitely, this is definitely like the, Goichi looked at the top of the screen and was like, all right, well, no one can play. I'm gonna just jump. That was a bad moon miss. I can't believe he tried bad moon in this connection. That was a wake up DP that he missed because of the lag. Yeah. Yeah, the best part about this is as this match is happening and they're in two, their ping is up 80 since the set started, by the way. They were playing at 170 ping for two matches. And somebody, I'm not going to say who it was, but somebody in the in the chat was like, don't send me in. I'm not trying to play against fucking Goichi with no plug. <laughs> Goichi unplugged the router. Don't send me in. I'm not trying to play against cordless. Go That's what it was. Cordless Goichi. That's what somebody said. They said, don't send me and I'm not trying to play against cordless Goichi. <laughs> I was like, damn, he said cordless Goichi. <laughs> cordless. Oh, that shit was powerful. They had 170 ping and then it jumped 80 ping for the last two rounds. I'm not sure why. This is the power of a ninja. <laughs> Alrighty, Apology Man versus Kazunoko. Strap in. Apology Man talked the whole time about how he didn't want to play this matchup and he didn't want to fight against Chip while on the broadcast. So obviously Japanese players have ears and they sent a Chip player against him. This matchup looks tough, I gotta say. From round start, I feel like this looks pretty dangerous because there's a few reasons, right? This character is fast as fuck. I don't know if you guys know much about Chip. He's real quick. And importantly about Chip, he is really good at fighting for horizontal and airspace, right? He has obviously a triple jump, he has jump 2k, jump h, jump s in the air, and his grounded approach with run up far slash or run up uh, h or 6p or whatever are really, really fucking good. So he's a hard character to keep out, um, especially for a character like Faust where his commitment op or his uh, options to keep him away are rather committal, right? Like jump h in the air means that if he's running under you, he's gonna get close. You know, jump P or something is the same kind of issue. Same thing with 2P or whatever, right? So, you know, you can kind of just see it is very tough to keep this character out. Yeah, that setup was kind of fucked up. This cross up alpha blade, the diagonal one, and a jump D and the cross up jump H. That seems pretty good. Wow, his jab punished the Rekka? His jab goes so far. I didn't even realize that. It doesn't lead to that much, but second Rekka, that's a punish. Do you see that? Ah, his, he's got those long dishwasher's gloves. That's really, really far. Yeah, I mean, he threw one item and Kazunoko had already covered the entire distance that he created. That was really good. He was dead probably off that confirm too, right? Good trade in the air too. 
dude apology man is doing such a good job of keeping him out but it's like these are all tiny hits that was a great block on the 6k he tried to do the fast rc combo right gamma blade pressure this shit's hard i was talking about this in the last set but when he's pressuring with gamma blade like this you can mash a button to hit or trade with the gamma blade right because he's plus after you block this so then he does this again into another reco or gamma blade or whatever if you try to mash though and he he does reco or something else you're gonna get counter it and you'll explode so it's really hard to contest gamma blade consistently because his option after is you know is very good <laughs> Good bait. No, just 5H as a punish. Please don't die. I don't remember if he loses this round. Please don't lose this round. I talk about this on commentary, but if I think if you're Kazunoko, even though you lose this round, losing that burst really bad for Apology Man, right? It's like the fact that he got the burst off of him is a huge win if you're Kazunoko, I think. Like, that is a big thing to lose. For Roshan, what up? Thanks for the 44. I, I seen you've been striving. It's a big... Another thing that I like that Kazunoko does, look at the way he, he baits the air movement at the start of this match. Right? So he runs up and he FD breaks, right? And by running up and stopping like this, Apology Man's like, oh shit, is he going to approach in the air? So he does jump H to try to contest the air. Then Kazunoko runs up, and like I said, look at how much grounded space he covers so quickly. And again, Apology Man, he can't react to the run or the jump. It's too fast. He has to try to do it preemptively. And so because he's committed preemptively, it's very hard. That that 2K hitting at the top of the heel like that's pretty good. He didn't have meter to extend that. So hitting 5D by itself doesn't matter that much. Uh-oh. That was a great block, by the way. That is wild matchup knowledge. I feel like there's zero chance I would have blocked this. This alpha blade into the wall cling, into the jump PP for the double overhead right there. Zero chance I would have blocked that. You know, for someone who really did not want to fight Chip, he is very prepared. You can see it that Apology Man... That's very clear that he's played the matchup before, right? He's, he's talked about... Oh! Damn, that sucks. He hit 2k, but it was like... I think this is like the second hit or something, right? It's not the hit that hits at the top. It's like second or third hit, so the 5k into the 6h is a little too low. Oh. So he just runs up, donk. That sucks. That sucks so bad. That sucks omega bad. And that's a punish. Oh! How did he not punish? That was minus a billion. He could have just hit like h, probably. No point to burst, I think, here. Yeah, that was really rough. You had meter. Yeah, maybe he was too late. I don't know how late you can PRC the whatever it's called. The 6H on whiff. Yeah, the 5K either stagger into... Oh, that time he did hit him. Oh, and the burst whiffs. He's not that good after Rekka. See that challenge? It's good matchup knowledge from Apology Man, by the way. On hit on Rekka, he challenges right here. Chip is not plus after this Rekka hit. Like, after his second Rekka and first Rekka, it's not like he's, like, plus three or four or five or whatever, right? He's not that plus after the Rekka hit. I think he's, like, slightly negative on one of them, and then the other one, he's, like, close to zero or something. Rekka two is minus two. Yeah, he's he's pretty, uh, what's it called? He's pretty challengeable after it if you have something that reaches. This is just unfortunate. Watching this, it's so clear. Uh, Apology Man has good matchup knowledge, but also it's just Kazunoko, and this matchup looks hard. <laughs> I don't blame him. This shit just looks rough. That was a good block, actually. A good adjustment from Kaz, by the way, immediately. He did this last time. Jumped D into the air dash cross up H setup. Last time this hit, Apology Man blocks it this time, so he just goes for run up throw. I mean, you know, he's smart. You already made the adjustment to his setup, and he just immediately is like, okay, well, I'm just going to run up throw you instead. Fucking Chip is so pesky. This character's a little shit, you know that? That trade is good for cause, too. He's got so many resources to work with here. Yeah, you're just dead. Great confirm. It's hard to deal with this character. He's an asshole, man. He's so fast. 
He's so he's like really good at basically every range, right? Which is how the character works. He has so little life, but his tools are so strong. Yeah, that staggered 5k, gamma blade, alpha blade. His air buttons, jump S, jump D, jump H, jump K, jump P, they're all good. Dude, look at Mini Faust here, by the way. What an asshole. Mini Faust just did not reach right there, and so now instead. You hate to see it. This is such a fucked up spot. Mini Faust legit just turned around right at the end. That's fucked up. I talk about this after the match too, but YRC is a very important tool, especially in a matchup like this, right? YRC hitting airborne sucks. Look at how far away you get booted and he just lands and immediately is like, all right, tight. Like hit, hitting YRC out of the air right that like that really sucks. Grounded at YRC, you at least can, you know, press after, right? You're like very plus. But yeah, that's really bad. He's just dead. Hitting YRC and out of the air is really unfortunate. Like characters like Eno, characters like, you know, Chip there, he was doing 6K. Or if you do it on some other character's overhead or some move where they're in the air, like getting the YRC out of the air like that really sucks. I, he played well. He just got, uh, he just got him. All right, so let's check out Lost Soul versus Fab. Lost Soul, before he went up, said, I'm I'm down to go in right now. I'll play anybody as long as it's not Fab. He's like, I'm down to, as long as I don't fight against Fab, I'm good. So he goes up, and then JP team is like, all right, we're sending in Fab, right? You know, I like that FAB, just like, he, he just strikes fear into the heart of mankind, you know? Damn, this is a far ass connection too. They put too many East Coasters in here. Fuck the East Coast. I'm actually surprised uh, Flick hit that. Oh. The thing is too about this matchup, I don't know too much about Anji versus Pa as an idea. I wonder if that FD actually made this whiff. This this FD maybe? Oh no, the FD was before he did the car or the command throw. I don't know too much about this matchup, but I know that he was really not looking forward to playing it. And he really did not want to at all. Yeah, burst on the 6H. It was even before the Fujin. I guess the... Oh... I was going to say, the burst point was pretty late in that combo, so... Ah, that sucks. Hammerfall break. Just the stampede check. Oh, that's cool. I, that's cool that if you... Oh, no. That if you spin through Flick, you get a punish. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he just tried to... He tried to Twitter meme him with just the triple command throw. Dead. Yeah, you have so much time when that far slash hits. I mean, that was brutal. There, There's not a lot of, like... There's not even a lot, really, I think, to chat about so much that game. It just kind of was like every every hit really just sucked. Nice. I like this round start option from FAB. Like, just doing, uh, you know, he does 2P, right? And when he sees the backdash, immediately does slide head. Slide head is really good against a lot of characters. Uh, you know, it has armor. And from full screen, Anji, you know, like, what are you going to do to challenge it, right? Are you going to spin or something? You can try to spin it, I guess, but if it hits, the reward is pretty big. Counter hit Mega Fist. And a little too far for the Garuda. Oh, no. That was good defense, actually. That was a wild ass rollback. And he confirmed off of it anyway. This is what I mean about his combo damage is quite high. I mean, this is against Pot, right? Did he even spend meter on this? He didn't, right? This is just counter hit 6H Fujin. Oh, yeah. And then he gets the burst bait. Yeah, this is a meterless route. Jesus. This is a lot of damage. Oh, that sucks. He even tried to cancel on the armor. You saw that. He does far slash and he tries the Fujin. I wonder if spin would have went through slide head maybe instead. Oh, that's interesting that he just did Ko into the knockdown. And yeah, that sucks. Just gets hit by the mirror super. RC, nice. So the RC shockwave counts as another hit. This is an important thing for fighting this character. This has one hit of armor, right? So if you find yourself seeing red and you know that Potemkin is armoring whatever you're doing, uh, RC is a great option because the shockwave hit will count as a hit for this. See that? 
So that's something important to keep in mind when fighting this character. Yeah, I'm really curious if that's a dude. How this motherfucker's he's got the game shark plugged in. I swear. How the fuck did he just flick that first try? I hate him. Dude, if I was full screen, I don't know if I could flick that butterfly even with my best try. And he just does it like for... <sighs> that shit is cheap. People were talking about this on Twitter. Apparently, because of the slowdown right here, you cannot jump this. This is an unjumpable Garuda. That shit's sick. Also, fuck that. That's a big throw with. Does get slowed down, but the butt. Oh, that killed. That's fucked up. Does get slowed down, but the butt. Catches him out of the air. You gotta be kidding me. The bounce. Oh, he tried to back that shit. Look like on the close slash two S. Same round start we've seen a lot from uh, Fab so far. By the way, the two P into the slide head. He must 2P, and then if he sees that you backdash, just commit to it as, like, a default option. Like, all right, fine. You're backing up? Sure. Damn. Oh, no. That was just a hard read on the burst, by the way. He just does close slash jump block. This is just a straight-up hard read into the Kara pop buster for the punish. Straight-up just read on the burst. Why does this do so much? And you're just dead. <laughs> he just did close slash and did jump block and was like, mm-hmm. All right. We have we have a few more matches to watch, maybe like two, two or three tomorrow. I think actually, by the way, in terms of matchups for Soul, I think Pop fights Soul actually decently well from my experience. I feel like he has very useful tools against it. First of all, yeah, Gunflame. Gunflame has a few problems in this matchup. Obviously, you flick it, but you can Mega Fist over it or flick it in a block string. You can also slide head it or hammer fall it from full screen. So, you know, he has like good anti Gunflame options. Yeah, flick right away. Yeah, just you know, you, you can't really. Yeah, and the hitbox on flick. Look at how look at how high this hitbox is, by the way. Deb is already at like this is a run jump height and it still pushes you all the way back. There's a 6P. Just like the early the early decision making was very good from Fab. Also, decision making from Deb here. Six S counter hits here. Notice no gun flame. Notice no bandit revolver. The reason is because gun flame will not combo at this this height, right? Or this distance. Also, another thing, in this matchup in general, uh heavy characters. So him, Nagoriyuki, and uh what's that motherfucker's name? Leo. Chunky boys like that are hard, harder to get the vortex combos off of in a lot of cases. So you you very rarely you know get it. Uh, you you kind of don't get those hits that often. Yeah, that was a, a rough spot to be. FAB is just kind of getting punched. Yeah, you can't really cancel there on success because uh, your options are so bad. Jesus, bang bang, wall splat dead. Damn, yeah, those flicks did not pay yeah, the chunky dudes, the big, yeah, the big bone characters are not easy to do that on. I like this approach from uh, Deb. That is a huge jump back. Also, jumping back is good matchup knowledge against Soul, by the way. You should jump back. Oh, that's a huge drop. Yeah, you hate to see it. Jumping back in the corner is very good against Soul's pressure. If uh, You know, because he, he wants to strike throw. That's what Soul does. It's in his DNA. So up backing like this is, you know, a really good option. Look at the damage you get counter hit starter every time you jump out of a throw. It's very good, especially when uh, you don't have meter as soul because you can't PRC it. Yeah, these hurts. Dev, that drop that Dev had there, oh, that drop where she missed the DP on uh, the clean of DP combo, that really, really hurts. There you go. Yeah, finds the counter hit timing. Although at that distance, that is the wrong combo. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes, but 
If you get counter hit H instead of doing gun flame, Vortex is a better starter, but it's hard it's kinda hard to confirm because you're usually not thinking, oh, don't cancel and then go for Vortex, right? It's not usually in your mind. Yeah, you normally get Vortex after that if you're close to the corner, but getting hit by five H by itself when Soul has no meter or is not in the corner is not that bad usually. Oh, you're a Sage Am fan. Oh, okay, this is big. You also can go for throw a lot more as Deb because you have meter. See? Something pretty important for Nasty Nate. What up? The reason Deb's doing these throws is that, uh, what's it called? With meter, if you jump or backdash or whatever and the throws miss time, you can just option select it and PRC and then air throw or, you know, try jump H or whatever, or 2H or whatever anti you want to do. Oh no, that was a hard read. That was what kind of damage you get off of this. 6H splat. Yeah, that shit hurts. That is bad news. But Deb does have meter here. Yeah. Oh, burst. Yeah, immediately. This jump D2 was a real problem. Yeah. I don't know what Soul's best option is against it. I feel like most of your AAs will clash. I think DP also clash. I tested in the beta. I'm not sure if it's the same now. That is unfortunate. If Pa is above your head like that, it's kind of hard to challenge, right? Because most characters, your air throw or whatever your anti air option is, not so bad. But uh, Potemkin Jump D changes his jump arcs and the timing of it so much. It's a pretty good move to deal with that situation. For input, yeah. We'll find out later. I, I tested it in the beta, and I couldn't find... Oh, that was a good read. I couldn't find that many strong options. That was a wake-up DP, and then the hero burst from Deb. It's the, the California burst. That was a big commitment, and that is going to hit... Oh, it didn't hit cause the good old recovery. That's super... Does anybody know the startup on Mirror Super? This is essentially a seven frame move that meted it, right? Because you're plus three on close slash and then did this. I guess it could be even faster. 10 plus nine. Oh, wow. It's very slow. Damn, that is super slow. Even if you do raw far slash, you probably will recover on a meaty, right? You can also throw it. Yeah. 10 plus nine. Holy shit. Oh, commitment. And that is going to hit. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. The God button. I, th I changed my mind. Oh, that actually, I think you could have punished that. Far slash, you know, doesn't have a whole lot of recovery. <laughs> 10 plus 9 is pretty slow. For sure. 21. <laughs> yeah. What's a California burst? People call Cali burst when you burst with like 10% life or like five, like a pixel, and your opponent's got a ton of life. Exhibition point here. You can call it whatever kind of burst you want. Wherever you live, that's the kind of burst it is. It's hard to it's hard to punish Megafist when they're spaced out like that, by the way. Oh no, Deb in trouble here. Backs up for the gun flame. That was a good read too from Fab. Oh man, you kind of That was really good spacing from Fab too. Ah, uh, that hurts. The jump in off the wall. Damn, that shit hurts. Oh, that was really, really, really solid. I think like the neutral control in that matchup looks really like um uh studied from fab right like far slash slide head flick like uh 2p a lot of really really useful buttons to kind of control the space where soul wants to be right i think he has like a lot of useful tools to fight against soul i get asked a lot what matchups like soul has that are bad i don't know what his matchups are but the characters that seem like they fight him decently well so far are maybe chip bot I don't know who else. Oh yeah, maybe Ma Axel is really useful in the neutral against Soul, but then when you get in, it's pretty bad. Leo, yeah, I think Leo fights Soul well. I think that matchup seems pretty even. Damn, that was a really interesting match. Okay, I can watch both these. Why not? These matches are both pretty fast, and then we can get into some gaming. Kizzy Tomo, that connection was booty. All right, Hook versus Samito. What did you guys think about this match, chat? I remember watching it and. If you guys don't know the lore, the hook subs were, and hook and uh, apology man were like, I don't want to play chip. That's all I care about. And Sumito on the right here is like the god chip, right? He's incredibly good. So he just, he is nasty. I was watching him play. I was mentioning, I was watching him play against Roy, which is like one of the best souls from Japan. Bro, he was getting his ass beat. Like he was fucking up Roy. He's really good. Sumito is really, really good. So yeah, I mean... This is uh, Hook versus Samito. Early air dash in, wall splat. Nasty. That is 50% uh, meter list to eat at the start of the round, and he gets the meter bonus, which is pretty big. And the health, which is also really scary. Six second wall break. 
Six consoles. Damn, that was a trade. Oh, no. Burst? Probably not on this round, actually, right? Yeah. I think it... I mean, unless he gets another hit, I would... Oh, man. Dude, Chip, I have to say, this button is some bullshit. This button right here... Far, this button is some bullshit. It's so good. It's incredibly far. He has great cancels out of it. It's like super fast. What's the frame data on this chat? I remember hearing how quick this was and being disgusted. Nine frames? God damn. Dude, it's so good. And it's really, really hard to contest with on the ground. It, it goes mad far and he has good cancel options, right? He has Gamma Blade. Uh, what's it called? He has... Um, uh, Rekka, obviously, Alpha Blade, Command Throw. Oh, nice 6P. That's good matchup knowledge. Gamma Blades plus, and you can combo off of it. Oh, you try to walk like... This is one thing that's fucked up about Chip, too, by the way, right? So, after he goes Alpha Blade and then comes down for the walk link mix-up on JH, look at this. He up back to get out of it, and Chip just lands and 6Ps, right? That sucks. You up back the setup, and then he's just already on the ground hitting you with 6P and a grounded Rekka. Yeah, far slash is a good button, as you can tell. I mean, you know. Oh, no, big drop. Oh, and he didn't know how to punish. Oh, man. I, th I wonder if that's what he was looking for. Oh. And he's a real chip player, you know that? He's a real chip player, I gotta say. I wonder if this was trying to bait the YRC, by the way. When he drifted backwards... He he drifted backwards on the RSC. I wonder if he was trying to bait this. I don't know, actually. But then, he whiffs a DP. And then he tries to hit far slash. Gold bursts it. Runs up 6k. He's just like, whatever, I'm sending it. Yeah, I would imagine he didn't mean to do run up DP, but who cares, right? He's like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it. There'd be gardening happening. Yeah, I think Chip is one of the best characters for sure. He's really strong. Anyway, I was just talking about this because the gardening was loud, but I think now we can probably watch the match. All right, game two. Oh, no. Oh, no, that was nasty. He thought he anti-aired him. Good old East Coast USA to Japan. Oh, this is a pretty good spot. Good old banana. Wait, what happens to the peel here? Does he have to block it? Oh, I guess not. That's probably why that jump back D setup is so good here. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize. Jump back dust into air bomb back. This combos anyway. Isn't he supposed to get further back though? I guess the banana there was kind of an issue, but... It's funny, I feel like Hook's Faust is a, a bit more aggressive than Apology Man's is. Even in this matchup in particular, right? The weight? Yeah. That was good of Hook. I think he made the best of the bomb in that situation. Because, you know, like, you're forced into an air exchange here when bomb is out. Right, so bomb's there. And he hits it back over to him. He has to throw a bomb bag here, essentially, right? To float above the bomb so he's not in block stun. So, this is a good little jump H to catch him on the way down. That's one of the most important buttons in this matchup, I have to imagine. Why are we watching this? You know, we watch both of the, uh, the chip foul sets, and they both are pretty nasty, I gotta say. Oh, no. Wow, was that burst safe? That was really... I don't know when you're supposed to burst this. Can you burst this 2H, I wonder? That did so much damage. Holy shit. I did not think he was dead. That was smart. I, I mean, Samito did a good job of trying to make the combo hard to burst. Oh, no. He made the combo hard to burst, and more importantly, like, I didn't think that was going to kill at all. Oh, we got meteors. Nice. That was a cross-up. So that's one thing that Faust players have started to do, and I think it's really smart, is the Scarecrow position, right? Like, you immediately teleport there from the second it happens. So you throw Meteors. This, you see, it's already cross-up, right? You see how Chip's already facing that way? Like, he was already going to go for cross-up, and then the Meteors come down. Oh, did he uncross himself up? I'm not sure. 
He did block, but then he got hit by the rest. Yeah, that was probably hard to combo off of. The RC didn't hit because the DP was such... It was on such a like an extended uh, hitbox. You're a little sick fuck. Hook gang god, little bussy ass. You see that? That's what he gets for cheating. I forgot he does this so much. The camera, if you do the swing, it fucks up the camera even on whiff. So you can do this even once they burst it. So the camera gets all sideways and shit, which is uh, is mad weird. And then he still got the hit anyway. Yeah, he does this a lot. I've seen Hook do this on his stream a lot. I think it's pretty hard to deal with. Damn, that was a nasty match. Let's get out of there quick. If we just move quickly beyond it, then no one will notice how how uh, he lost in legit two minutes. They're going to be three out of five and in my chat any second. They're going to be three out of five and in my chat any second. This connection. 200 MS, huh? Just a immediate instant burst. And that's really good, right? Because when you burst... Uh, Ooh. Like that, you're gonna put so that's one thing that I didn't know about this matchup. Yeah, does 2H just always beat the jump 2K option? That seems really good. Yeah, that was good. I think the the mallet there was... There's a couple of things about this matchup that are interesting. One, Nage just lets the tornado rip on block all the time. Because uh, the punish that he gets is bad right like zato just gets 2p 2p or 5p 5p or whatever like it's not a very good punish and the other thing is jump 2k it seems to get smoked uh, on block like both options uh lose to 2h it looks like which is a pretty big deal actually right oh damn trying to make it cross him yeah if you can't punish that very well that seems pretty unfortunate i feel like for broadway what up Yeah, but, you know, a lot of characters can hit dead. A lot of characters can hit 5p after jump 2k. However, being able to hit 2h is a pretty big deal. Right? That's that's pretty useful. I wonder if that's consistent. Also, yeah, the punish on that being bad is so good for Faust, actually. Uh oh, he's got bomb behind him. Yeah, he kind of was forced into an air dash maybe there. I love that he just does that on block. He's like, whatever, dude. I'm just going to send it because who cares? This character's... That was a good block, actually. I don't know how he saw the dust. He's like, this character's pressure or punish against this is so bad. I'm just going to do mix, mix, mix over and over the tornado. Oh, he lost the trumpet for sure. Yeah, but the tornado... That was sick. The tornado is, um, is such a useful tool in this matchup, right? I also love this. Tornado, RC, fast RC, whiff the air button into command throw. We saw him do that in the exhibition in the beta, and I think that's really strong. Yeah, that was going to be a wall break, which I don't know that it would have killed, but it would have been very close. Oh, no. He was trying to hit the bomb. Trumpet. Yeah, it's there. Although Oppose absorbed the entire thing. Damn, that is really good. That is so good, actually. That beats bomb. Does that beat bomb bag consistently too? I got. I don't know if he's done it yet. He's been doing mix, mix, mix a lot. Oh, that was so high. Yeah, that jump D was all the way up in the sky. Oh, the piercer. Yeah, that happens sometimes. No Kami was really surviving there, huh? I'm surprised he didn't try to 2H or 2P uh, Eddie there. Damn, he got the side switch. The afro is going to hit. Oh, he gave the afro to himself. Un that's unfortunate that he hit close slash 2H. Also, 2S would have comboed. Oh, the bomb. That was almost a cool confirm, too. He loves doing that. I think that this is actually one of the strongest tools Faust has, probably, right? Good awareness, too. The, the um... The Scarecrow PRC throw is, like, such a useful tool for this character, right? This is just so strong. Like, throw or command throw or button or whatever. Being able to teleport and instantly cancel it is really useful. And then here, when he gets the item toss, when he sees the anvil, it's just immediate command throw. Because no matter what happens, whether you jump, whether you wake up with a button, whether you backdash, the anvil is going to keep you safe anyway, right? The, the awareness is really good. He, like, sees the item and immediately is like, oh, okay, just go for the command throw. Damn, tell him pass, Sajam. You're on the right track. Yeah, seeing the bomb bags that you were talking about earlier to get above uh, 
uh, little Eddie. The fact that he can't punish that is so funny. Damn, that sucks. That is a really unfortunate thing to deal with. Cross up. This setup is nasty, by the way. His awareness is so good. He gets bomb, and then the hammer here stops him from jumping, right? Because hammer's going to fall down, so, like, you can't really do that much. And then the cross up. Man. That is such good awareness. Hello, Hanzo Gonzo. I was talking about your tweets earlier and how you're a whiny baby. <laughs> no, I was saying I agree with you. That is, uh, Apology Man brings up the most important point. His item awareness is excellent. Also, good matchup awareness here. 2P, 2P summon, and he just challenges. Look at his nasty little hooked arm down here. He got that nasty arm. That's such a nasty little angle, I gotta say. I don't like the way his arm looks. But yeah, Nage's item awareness is like, it's so, it, it feels like every, same thing right there, by the way, another punish. It feels like every situation, you really cannot get away with any of that bullshit on him, right? He just always is ready. Oh no. Fuzzy wuzzy. That was fucked up. It's also very useful to do post, um... What's it called? Post wall splat, right? Just running up, he does 2k, close slash, jump cancels into the, uh, what's it called? Into the blue RC, bing, bing. That was gonna be a fuzzy anyway, even if he didn't get hit by the first hit. Apology Man gets way too high. He gets way too high. That's cool that he used the jump cancel BRC for the fuzzy. I wonder if, I haven't messed with Souls BRCs for that. I have to try it. That was a good a little adjustment from Nokami, by the way. The summon, instead of doing Piercer this time, he does a pose. You see how Nage challenged, right? He does a pose this time because a pose obviously has armor, but then unfortunately committed to a different options and Nage, Nage had already just challenged. Kind of sucks. Ooh, mini Faust. Yeah, that hurts. 2D counter hit and a mix, mix, mix into the bounce into a combo seems really good. This shit is buff. I also like that Nage spends meter right after he gets the wall break almost every time. And the reason I like it so much is, so look at his, his resources right after the wall break, right? He's got like a little over one meter. I can mark it, actually. He's got like right here. This is where the meter is. So he's got a little over one meter, and then he immediately spends it. So he loses all that meter. And then look at how much meter he's built already. He's already back to over. Like, he completely rebuilt the tension he spent and then did it again. Again, and look at that. Nage Faust cleans up. There was a clear momentum shift. And I'm not saying it was a traitor's fault, but I'm. He's, uh, yeah, the positive bonus, I think a lot of people have realized just how powerful it is. Like, you built so much meter, right? I already saw. Early into the game, there was stuff with like Fenrich and other people were finding like, oh, if you have positive bonus and you legit just run up on somebody and then like put yourself plus and then do some kind of pressure, like they're just stuck and you can just spend resources to put them in pressure. When you break the wall and you have positive bonus and then you just use something to put them in a true block string, crank up their risk and then do a 50-50 off of it, like they just explode, right? You can just win rounds so quickly. I think snowballing the positive bonus into a round win is really important, especially because... You get so many like fuzzies and like fucked up things with BRC.